What up, Nets fans? Nets boy here bringing you latest and your really exciting Brooklyn Nets news. Somehow, the Nets have managed to even up the series against the Hawks two games apiece. Behind one of the greatest playoff performances you will see in a while by Darren Williams. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't even begin to go into how incredible it was. But let's take a couple steps back and let's look at game three. Game three, Nets are down 2-0. Things aren't looking that good. They come out, and they come out strong, and they come out aggressive, and they're playing like they should. The crowd was behind them, and they just built a lot of intensity. They had a decent lead at the beginning of the game. They really shocked and just came out. Lopez was good. Darren Williams was eh. Uh, but Joe Johnson was good. Everyone just was clicking, and everyone was making big baskets. The Hawks battled back like I expected. Actually, I believe might have taken the lead at that point, but then the Nets persevered through, took the blows, and Jared Jack came up huge in that game when it comes to passing. He only had, I think, three points, but had tons of assists. Now, in that game, Darren Williams got clobbered and got hurt like he always does. And um, they weren't sure if he was going to play in Game 4. So I said that the Nets were probably going to win either Game 3 or Game 4. And I said I predicted them to win Game 3 because it's kind of what I expected. I expected them to come out with this energy and this toughness and this excitement because they were really in game game one and game two where they were in both those games they weren't blown out and i can tell you right now if they were blown out game two or game one the nets would not have won either of these two games because it's all mental for this team everything is, is between the ears but they were in this game so they felt they had a chance they go to barclay center they play great they win game three 91 to 90 91 to 83 which then brings us to game four now None of these games were even higher scoring, it never even cracked triple digits, but this game did, and this game was intense, back and forth the whole way, and then the Hawks built, it up, built up a big lead in the fourth quarter, and then all of a sudden, Darren Williams became Jesus Christ himself. It was incredible to see Darren Williams making these ridiculous shots, including one that you thought was like like two minutes to go. He's dribbling around, running around like an idiot. T shot clock's running down. He does a fadeaway deep three-pointer and nothing but net. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I mean, I I'm was speechless. I'm watching the game, and I'm saying, who's this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? This isn't the Darren Williams I know. The Darren Williams I know goes... You know, one for ten, and has like six turnovers. Who's this guy who's got 35 points, seven assists, and, and, and playing phenomenally and making big shots? Though he did almost cost the Nets the game. Why, when you have the ball with 14 seconds left to tie game, why are you shooting with six seconds left? That was really dumb. Thank goodness the Hawks were not able to capitalize. And, and, and the Nets managed to battle back and win in overtime, 120-115. Hands down, one of the best games I've seen in a long time the Nets played. Everyone played well. Brooke Lopez played phenomenal. He had 26 and 10. Joe Johnson made some big shots. Bram Bogdanovich had some big shots. But like I said, it was all because of Darren Williams. Now, if you are a longtime Nets boy subscriber and you have seen more of my episodes, almost exactly a year ago, it was a little bit, a little less than a year ago, I had wrote a song and performed a song called "Things That Are Better." in parentheses, than Darren Williams. And in it, I sung about all the things that I felt were better than Darren Williams. It's like growing up homeless, lots of poison ivy, falling down the stairwell, losing your house key, throwing up on your date, uh, getting dumped by your girlfriend, losing your cell phone, being late for work, a massive headache. They're all better than Darren. That was the song. Um, if you really want to go back, go. if you haven't seen that song, or, I mean, excuse me, heard that song or seen that video, go back in the next board archives. It's like episode, I want to say... 41-ish, 40-something. It was during the playoffs. I remember that, and Darren Williams was terrible. And, you know, me and, and, and writing really mediocre and silly songs. And I wrote one about Darren Williams. So it's been almost a year to that point, and um, I have to say I'm very impressed with how Darren Williams played. That being said, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This was one game... And if you look at the three previous games, he was pretty crappy in those games. But in one game, he managed to build back up some reputation and establish himself as a, as a very good to elite player. But 
the key is, can he and the Nets continue this level of play moving forward? It's a little frustrating to see Darren Williams put up these type of numbers, or 35 points and playing the way he did, because it makes you realize how good of a player he is and how frustrating it is, I would say, 90% of the time watching him play. Because he's capable of things that we saw. And look, you can't expect him to put up 35 points and make ridiculous fadeaway three-point shots and make big plays every game. But you expect him to be decent in most games or at least have games like this every once in a while. But Darren Williams hasn't had a game like this since his 57-point performance back when he was with, when the Nets were the New Jersey Nets and it was like his second year in the season, second year with the team. Against the Bobcats, uh, now uh, Hornets. Like it's it, and that's the thing that drives you crazy. This guy, you see glimpses all the time of why Darren Williams was debated as was. You know, there was a debate that he was the best point guard in the league. Everyone's like Chris Paul, Darren Williams, who's better? You know, and everyone actually more people were leaning towards Darren Williams than Chris Paul at first. And it was a huge debate, and, and, and then the Nets get Darren Williams, and he just becomes terrible with glimpses. And th that, that's the thing that's most frustrating thing about this, is that you see this performance, and you say, where has this been, and will this continue? And the sad truth is, it's not going to continue. Uh, maybe it will be the start of Darren Williams playing better and not putting up only three points, you know, and having six turnovers and so on and so forth. Maybe he can put up an 18 and 10 point performance, you know, in game five or, you know, because that's all we want. You know, I don't know what these unrealistic expectations were put onto Darren Williams when he signed that big contract, but all I ever wanted from the guy was 18 and, and eight, 18 and 10, you know, 18 points a game, eight to 10 assists. And be a good floor general, not turn the ball over more than like two times a game. That's all I ever wanted. I don't want the guy to score 35 points. I mean, it's great when he does, but all I want him to put up 18 and 8. If you ask me, if you got a point guard putting up 18 and 8, only turning the ball over two times a game, and shooting around 45% and controlling the tempo of the game, you got yourself a great point guard. That's all I ever asked for. You got Brooke Lopez to score 20 something points. You got Joe Johnson to score 20 something points. Brent Bogdanovich, just, just. 18 and 8. So, but, you know, when he puts up performances like he did, you know, last night, or two nights ago to be exact, because this video is going to air on Wednesday, um, it's great. Uh, but, you know, the question is, can he sustain it? Can the Nets sustain it? Brooke Lopez has been the one consistent factor throughout this series. He's been Brooke Lopez. Uh, Joe Johnson has had glimpses. He's come and gone. Boran Berganovich has had a pretty good series as well. Um, but he had a little trouble in the beginning, but he's played well the last few games. I don't think it's a coincidence that the two games the Nets have won, they've gotten Brooke Lopez, Darren Williams, and Boyan Bogdanovich, and really Joe Johnson all playing well. But really, those three guys. What, uh, is that is that the three? Is this Nets boys' rule of three again with the Nets? Is he talking about the equation again? What is this, like, the 20-something time Nets boys made reference to it? I made reference to it because it's a fact. When the Nets have three players playing well, they increase their chances of winning the game, to me, by 60%. If you get three players who are playing well, once again, what is playing well? Being efficient, scoring well, and not turning the ball over. So putting up about 20 points a game, shooting over 50%, and not turning the ball over. If they have three guys who do that, the Nets, to me, have about a 60% chance of beating every team in the league, of winning the game. They still could lose some games, because especially against the, the playoffs, a team like the Hawks is a very good team. They could still lose, but they'll be in the game. You grab a fourth player like Boyan Bogdanovich or Jared Jack, your team to me the chances increase to about seventy five percent. Look at these games. Look at the chances that they won. You know, in game one, Brooke Lopez was good. Joe Johnson was eh, and Darren Williams wasn't that good. No one else was that good. It was really just Brooke. It was like one and a half players. Maybe two if you count that Jared Jack uh, played decently. But they lost. Game two, same thing. Brooke Lopez good. Joe Johnson, I think, had a good game in that. A good-ish game, not that great. Boy, I forgot of it to one and a half. But go to game three. Brooke Lopez had a great game. Boyan Bergonovich had a good game. And Jared Jack, you know, he didn't score much, was great offensively and very efficient. <gasps> Three players. The Nets won. 
Now we go into last night's game, or the other night's game, Monday night's game. Brooke Lopez had a great game, and Darren Williams had a great game. And Joe Johnson had an end eh game, and Boyan Bergalovich had a good game. Three and, a, three and a half. But they won! Do you not see what I'm trying to say? It's the Nets' equation for success, and the key is now to make sure that equation continues. You, Brooke Lopez has been the one consistent player on the Nets. He's got to be there. He's got to put up his 20 and 8 that he's been doing. That's a given. Joe Johnson, Darren Williams, Boyan Boganovich, and Jared Jack. If two of those four guys can show up and play well and put up 20 points, shoot 50% from the field, and not turn the ball over, the Nets will have a chance of winning not just the game five, but the series, which I would have never thought would happen. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. By, all, by no means am I going to expect the Nets to win this series. I still don't. I think the Nets have played very well in this series. I think you're seeing some greatness from the team. But to me, the Hawks are still the better team. And really, in the best of three series, which it is now, when two of the games are in Atlanta, I don't think the Nets will win. That being said... I certainly do see it as a possibility that the Nets will win. They just seem to have a little bit more swagger. And they have all the momentum right now. All the pressure is on Atlanta. So people are saying. But I think because people are saying all the pressure is on Atlanta, there's more pressure on Brooklyn. If you listen to the radio, everyone's saying, oh, the Brooklyn Nets are going to beat the Atlanta Hawks. People are getting ahead of themselves. Yes, Darren Williams had a great game. Yes, Brooklyn Lopez has played well. Yes, it's 2-2. Yes, the Nets have more... More playoff experience than the Hawks, but they have more experience overall than the Hawks. But let's when it comes to it, the Hawks are the better team, and the Hawks will probably still win. I'm just ecstatic that the Nets have won two games. Remember, I had Hawks in five. Well, the Nets, no matter what, it's going six games. No matter what, it's going back to Barclays Center. And as long as the Nets come out and play hard in game five and in game six, even if they lose game five and game six, as a Nets fan, I will be very satisfied if. They play hard in both those games. However, I'll be ecstatic if they beat the Hawks, which they certainly can. And like I said, the key is, you know Brooke Lopez will be there, but where is Joe Johnson, Darren Williams, and, and Boyan Boganovich? But more importantly, where is Darren Williams? Can he play the way he played before in Game 4? Doubtful. But can he play a fraction of that that's still respectable? If he can do that, the Nets have a chance. The Hawks... They are kind of showing a little lack of leadership. You know, it's kind of their down, their, their, their flaw is that they have no true star player. That is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because you have no star player, you have no ego, the ball spreads around, you can't really focus on one player defensively, and you, they kind of just find the hot guy and ride the hot guy. And that helps, and that works great for them. But where does that become a problem? Well, you're seeing it right here in Game 3 and Game 4. When everyone is relatively struggling, or no one can get in a good offensive flow, you have no gun to turn to. You need a star player, or at least address a star player. It may not be the best choice. Like for the Nets case, for a while, it was Joe Johnson. That wasn't really the best choice. But at least it was a player they turned to when things weren't going well. The Hawks don't have that player. They need a guy to step up and say, we're down, we need a play, give me the ball. Now down the end of the stretch, Paul Millsap tried to be that guy. He made a nice basket, you know, those terrible defense by the Nets, down the stretch to tie the game. But still, they need a guy who you can say, that's the guy who's going to help carry us. Well, Darren Williams has proven to be that guy on, 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 on Monday. It's really been Brooke Lopez and Joe Johnson. But the truth is, you know it's going to be one of those three guys. And... There you go. But with the Hawks, is it going to be Teak? Is it going to be Horford? Is it going to be Millsap? Maybe it would be Corver. He's dying hot. How about uh, Damari Carroll, who appears to be the best player? He, that guy doesn't miss. He Every time he shoots a three, it goes in. That makes no sense. The guy doesn't miss. But, I mean, that's the flaw with the Hawks. Call it a flaw if you want. But when it's straight down, that's the situation. Game three and game four were won strictly on star power and talent. The Nets have... I don't want to say they have more talent, but they have players with higher ceilings. We know the potential of Brooke Lopez is dominant. We know 
the Joe Johnson can play at an all-time dominant level. Darren Williams, we just saw him play at an all-time dominant level. What player on the Hawks can play at an all-time dominant level? We've seen great games by Jeff Teague. Great game. Has it, have we ever seen Jeff Teague dominate? We've seen great games by Al Horford. Have we ever seen him dominate? Great games by Paul Millsap. Have we ever seen him dominate? You see what I'm trying to get at. That's what separates great players from the superstar players or the star players. Look, the, the Nets players, the reason why they're not that great of a team is that they're inconsistent. Brooke Lopez is the only consistent player. Darren Williams struggles at times, but play, but has glimpses of greatness. Same thing with Joe Johnson. Struggles at times, glimpses of greatness. And that's why this Nets team is dangerous, because of those players can play anyway. The reason why the Nets aren't the best team in the in the NBA and we're not the three seed like I expected to was because they had no consistency the whole year. The Hawks were the exact opposite. They have a consistent level that you normally get from their players, but they don't have the spikes of greatness. That's why that wins 60 games. And to be honest, that's the definition of a team that wins 60 games is they're probably a pretty consistently good team. But what separates them from like what probably will be the Cleveland Cavaliers, who I still am picking to coming out of the East despite Kevin Love's, Kevin Love's arm injury, is the superstar talent level. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving can carry that team on any given night. And that's what's going to separate them. And that's why the Nets have life in this series. And that's why a lot of people are starting to get on the Nets bandwagon. I'm still and saying, hold on, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but I am certainly more optimistic. That being said, I would absolutely love it if the Nets win the series and square off against Paul Pierce and the Wizards. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. And Paul Pierce... You know, there's a whole back and forth. I think everybody in the NBA wants Nets Wizards because of all the talking Paul Pierce has been doing about the Nets and all this stuff. I think that would be great, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's 2-2. It can go any way, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Tonight, Wednesday, the Nets, play Hawks, squaring off game five. It's going to be a tough one. This could be a really disappointing game for the Nets. I think that the Hawks are going to be really mad, and they're going to come out aggressive. And I think, I mean, I think the Hawks have to, might, might not blow out the Nets, but win this one pretty convincingly. I, I, I kind of think that that's what I'm feeling, only because, the, you know, the, so far when the team's back's against the wall, they've responded. And not that the Hawks' back is against the wall, but they're, they're, they're falling a little bit. And I think they're going to respond well. And um, I personally think that... The, I'm going to be honest, I think the Hawks will win game five. I think the Nets will win game six. I think this will go seven games. I think the Hawks will win game seven. That's my personal belief. But I think the Nets could steal it. I could think the Nets could steal a game in Atlanta. If they can, listen, if the Nets steal game five, things will be in really good shape for them. And I, I think that, you know, I think game I think game five is going to be the key. I think if the Nets win game five, I think they've got a shot at winning the series. If the Nets lose game five, I don't think, I don't think they'll do it. But either way, they've looked phenomenal, and we got to get more from this from Darren Williams. Darren, if you play the way you played on Monday, I will... Okay, how about this? If Darren Williams has continuously has a great performance the next two or three games, the remaining of the series, and when I say good performance, I mean plays like the top three players that they need to be. A guy who scores 20 points, shoots over 50%, and doesn't turn the ball over. If Darren Williams does it the rest of the series... I will write a retractable, a retracting song, retractable song, retraction, that's what I'm looking for, a, song, a retraction song based off of my song last year about things that are better, better than Darren Williams. That's my next boy word. However, if he resorts back to previous crappy Darren Williams, no retraction at all. So that's what I'm going to say to you. That is my own personal uh, motivational tactic to, to uh, Darren Williams. Like, he, like he's going to ever watch a Nets Boy episode. But if he did, that'd be really cool. But that's my own personal... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, 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 calling him out. My own challenge. My own personal challenge to Darren Williams is for the remainder of the series, so either the next two games or the next three games, play well. 20 points. Over 50% shooting. 
Tell you what, I'll give him the better. I'll give him forty-five percent shooting because fifty is a little hard to do. I don't consistently, but twenty points. No, I'll make it easier. Eighteen points, fifteen. Uh, Eighteen points, forty-five percent shooting, and less than three turnovers. If Darren Williams can put up those numbers for the remainder of the series, I will have a retraction song. I don't know what I'll call it yet or how it'll go, but I, I, that that's my that's my challenge, to Darren Williams. And if he does that, I think the Nets have a chance. But overall, I think this will be a really exciting series. I think everything is, is super cool. Um, and I, I can't wait for, for, for Game 5 Wednesday night slash tonight, whatever. Depends on what you see in this video. Like I said, the video, I always record the video the day before I post it. So I try to keep that in mind that most of you probably be seeing the videos, you know, the day of. But for me personally, like for me right now, it's it's Tuesday night. This video won't be posted the Wednesday night. I don't know if you ever picked up on that. Um, so, I'm saying tomorrow night, but really I should be saying tonight's game. But anyway, off topic. We'll see what happens. Like I said, the equation of three. Keep our fingers crossed, and I'm excited. So, anyway, the next Nets Boy episode will probably be at the end of the series. It probably will be. I, maybe I might have one after Game 6. If there'll be a Game 7, I might have one. But either way, next Nest Point episode could be the last one for the year, or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. That's up to Darren Williams and the Nets. So anyway, until next episode, keep your eyes open, and let's go Nets. And this is Nets Boy, signing off.